Hi, it's Simone Stewart from Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. This program is aired on the Mercy and Truth Network. We go live on Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. your time. Um, and on Mondays, we have our repeat at 3 p.m. local time or 4 p.m. within the environment. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. How have you been? Man, I'm telling you there's so much happening here in Jamaica and worldwide. But of course, let's talk a little bit more about Uniquely Me. You know it's a program for women, about women, and by a woman. We talk about the traumas and the challenges of life, and of course, how we've triumphed over them. This week, I have another unique woman here on set with me. Mary, hi. So good to have you. Hello, <laughs> television audience. <laughs> so Mary is a devout Christian. She is a journalist, a toastmaster, and of course, an author and a woman of God. Amen. But I want Mary to tell us a little bit more about her. Mary, where are you from? St. Mary. Mary from St. Mary. That's <laughs> Mary from St. Mary. <laughs> they ask me the question back to back, like, what's my name and where I'm from? And I say, Mary, St. Mary. They think that it's my name. So over time, I've just become Mary from St. Mary. Mm -hmm. And then I add the same to the Mary. So I'm now St. Mary from St. Mary to show that I'm a woman of God. Ah, uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary, one other thing, as I research, um, research your story a little bit, I noticed that you are a Toastmaster. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for something else on the Toastmaster and I realized I saw nothing else except just Toastmaster. Tell us, what does it mean to be a Toastmaster? Being a Toastmaster for me is a great honor because what it means is that I have, I'm taking the business of wanting to speak as my best self yes. or wanting to lead as my best self. Mm -hmm. Seriously, Toastmaster doesn't change you what they do they work with you to become your best you mm -hmm. so people like you complimented me on the way i speak <laughs> yes. and that has a lot to do with toastmasters so i'm a member of the pay setters toastmasters here in jamaica mm -hmm. we meet at exim bank on hope road mm -hmm. and over the year or so that i've been a member i have gained tremendously from going to toastmasters because they they do actual life presentations. Mm -hmm. So it's people teaching people, oh. members teaching members. So you come in, you present on a topic if you're training to be a speaker. Mm -hmm. And from that, your peers judge you and oh. give you feedback. And it's there everybody get to see and everybody get to learn. So I've learned a lot. Okay. Actually, you were talking to me about my video. Right. So I noticed you have mm -hmm. a number of YouTube videos entitled Talk Time. Yes. And I I figured it had something to do with Toastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell us a little bit, just quickly what it is. Because I know there's some quick snippets and that kind of thing. Yes. But I love the pronunciation. And I, you know, it, it gives you this kind of you know, kind of thing. So <laughs> tell us a little about it. It is believed that the pressure of public speaking is one of the worst things that can ever happen to anybody. Because so Toastmasters have this segment that is called table topics, oh. which is impromptu speaking. And you're called upon if you attend a meeting, they can call upon any guest or any member mm -hmm. just to speak impromptu on a topic that you never get to prepare about. Mm -hmm. And so that inspired me when I went there. I was like, oh, my God this really opens up your wisdom and your awareness to yeah. so many topics that we speak about as mm -hmm. regular people daily with your girlfriends and when you speak to your girlfriends or just regular people don't be the pressure of being judged right. we're usually so passionate and eloquent and this stuff just spit out <laughs> so fast yeah. but the minute somebody puts a label on it and said simone can you give a presentation on x topic mm -hmm. You freeze up. Oh, yeah. We start sweating <laughs> and everything starts going. <laughs> anyway, and if I had more time, I'd tell you, I'd put you on the spot right away. Oh, my <laughs> But I'm going to invite you, audience, just check out Mary's YouTube channel um, uh, called Talk Time, and yes. you will see exactly what I'm talking about. If you're just tuning in, this is Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. And on set, I have Mary from St. Mary. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> now, Mary, one other thing um, we want to talk about first is your book mm -hmm. called Glass Houses. Yes. And I share something with you. 
I used to, part of where, one of the branches where I used to work, I would go across to York Pharmacy very often. Yes. And I remember seeing your book, and I got to hold it up so everybody gets a chance to see your book. I would see the book on the shelves, mm -hmm. and I took it up because, again, because I'm an author, I tend to be very fascinated with other people's books. Understood, book. understood. So I took up your book, and as I flipped through the book, I said, hmm, this one was done overseas for sure, and this is <laughs> <laughs> this is not a local author. Yes. But as I got, got to know you a little bit better and went through your book i realized that there is a story behind it yes and one such story is that you are wondering why is it god isn't answering and i guess you must have been saying why is he not answering you absolutely would you like to share with us a little bit what made you think god wasn't answering you well, Simone, when you have a long list of things that you're praying for, mm -hmm. and you see you're not seeing any of them manifest manifested, mm -hmm. it's sort of safe to assume that they were not answered. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my angle. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a Christian home. I right. didn't have a choice in Christianity. I believe I feel that way right. because my parents. We're taking me to church before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I think many of us can relate to that. <laughs> Very little bit, Jamaica. So I grew up believing, as I say on the, in the in the on the back cover there. Mm -hmm. I saw my parents praising God even when we were starving. Yes. I may wonder what is this all about. As a child, you know, it, it doesn't come home to you. Mm -hmm. You don't actually start to believe for yourself. Yeah. I think for me, the belief in God mm -hmm. is a reason same thing uh, just like a like, few years ago even though I was I grew up in the Christian home and I thought I was a Christian and I'm praying yeah. and believing on all of these things I think the belief for me yes. that true connection that true relationship with God mm -hmm. did not come until a few years ago wow. so I was there you know doing what we were taught mm -hmm. you want something you start to ask God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm like none of these things were happening yeah. and I got to the point where I became angry uh. Wow. I was at no man. You, I was angry, and so I was looking for other angry supporters. Mm -hmm. I was angry at God, mm -hmm. yeah. And I wanted to find people who were also angry, because you know, misery love company. Oh yes. So I, I'm talking to people, and I'm sharing my experiences about God not being who He is, mm -hmm. not answering, not caring, not loving. Mm -hmm. And the more I talk, the fun, the funny thing happened. <laughs> I am talking to people trying to find supporters yes. of my cause. Yes. But the more I talk to people, is the more they're telling me these stories of God's goodness. I'm sorry. <laughs> and how God is answering them and how God is talking to them and how God is doing this in their life. Ah. And I'm like, no man, God, <laughs> you and I are coming from far back. Mm -hmm. Why are you talking to these people? Yeah. But not me. You, you know, Mary, I, 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 I applaud you for that because... There, there are a number of us in church who we camouflage. We're hypocrites in church. And and I tell you what I mean by that. That, you know, somebody goes up to testify and we know in our hearts that God not answering our prayers. Or yes. so we think he's not answering. Mm -hmm. And so we clap hands with them and we, we, we you know, we applaud and we're on the bandwagon yes. and maybe we go up and give a testimony or two. But in truth and in fact, we really and truly don't. We, we don't believe in this We thing. don't believe it. Right, and I, I really applaud you for for coming face to face with that and and acknowledging mm -hmm. that though you were a Christian and grew up in the church, hey, here it was. It was just a few years ago. You you that the finally belief actually came. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I, I was telling you that when these people shared their stories with me, Simone. Yeah. I it started to transform. Mm. It became a transformative process for me. Where I was saying, as they were telling my telling me their stories, I was like, "What? That happened to me too? We <laughs> 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 never called that as anything. We uh, never called that as the answer. Mm -hmm. But you saw that as an answer." Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I love I love the humor of God because so all this time yes. God was answering you. But the thing is you have a prescribed way yes. in which you want God to answer. You want a joke? <laughs> At the point when I decided that I want to get married. Yes. Yeah. A few years back. I mean, the whole transformation started a few years back. I said to God, All right, what you're gonna do for my husband? Mm -hmm. Today, you're going to let a man walk up to my office. Let's hear this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to 
bring a rose mm -hmm. and he's going to compliment me how nice I look mm -hmm. and he's going to ask me to marry him. Come on, girl. Tell me that it happened. And mm. this is how I want it to happen today mm -hmm. so that I know that this is you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and this is your answer to my prior mm -hmm. to finding a husband. Ah, uh, so you put God in a corner. All right, let's hear this. <laughs> you, you want to hear the rest? Mm -hmm. So anyways, I went to work that day. Looking all dandy shandy, you mm. ready for my husband, okay? <laughs> and I prayed, I have myself covered, man. I prayed and I'm ready. Yeah. Um, I sat there all day looking at that door. Several people came in. None of them had a rose. Uh -huh. None of them asked me to marry them. <laughs> None of them looked like my husband. <laughs> uh -huh. At the end of the day, I went home. Wow. And I let it at him. Ah. I let it all at him, man. I say, <laughs> God, once more you failed me. Yes. Once more you didn't show up. <laughs> how simple, how hard could that be for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One man out of billions is all I ask to turn up in my office. Mm -hmm. But here it is. I'm coming home. Am I going to die an old spinster? <laughs> Maybe that's your answer. No man for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tears running down. I'm like, okay, Rado, mm -hmm. if that's the answer, I'm accepting it. <laughs> no, I'm done. done. You, you know, as I'm listening to you, I can just imagine God. Because Mary, believe it or not, a number of us does that to God. Really? Yeah, I man. thought I was the only weird until, one. No, I'm until I started you. talking to these people. <laughs> <laughs> we put God in a corner. And we put him in a box, you know, with a gun to his head. And we tell him, this is how I want you to operate today. Yes. But you know what I found? That I'm happy that God did not respond to some of my stick-ups. It's true. Because I look back on my life but now, and I'm sure some of the persons whom you have spoken to, yes. you they look back on their lives and are some of the people that came their way. And I'm sure even for you, some of the men that maybe came your way, you look back now and you say, God, I'm thankful that you didn't allow that one to be my husband. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You, you, you see, the thing is, God knows what's best for us. Absolutely. But we see, we literally see through the little, win, the little um, wave your mirror. It's our plan or no uh, plan. Or no plan. God plan out the window. But you know what Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says? Tell me. Uh, for I know the plans I have for oh, you. Oh, scripture. I love it. You understand? I, it. I want to give you an expected end. Yes. But the thing is, because we can't see, mm -hmm. right? Because we can't see what's around the corner. Because we can't see the next five years. We, we, tend, to, we tend to say, God, you haven't answered. You have not answered. You know? But you have, I noticed in the book, um, you wrote a number of, you wrote from the perspective of others. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, their stories. So we got the, we get a picture now that you are now seeing that God has been answering. But yes. why glass houses? Glass houses came to me as a name for the book because when I thought of myself mm -hmm. and when I thought of the people that I spoke with, one thing came across very clear for me mm -hmm. was how fragile we fragile we were as a people. Yeah. How transparent we were we are. Mm -hmm. Even when we think that nobody seen through our fake and our shades that we're putting up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how um what's the other thing? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But the fragility of man yes. and the transparency of man mm -hmm. was what guided me. And I thought, we're like glass. Yeah, wow. <laughs> we're like glass. Yeah. And I liken us to houses because you're a house, I'm a house, and we're all conducting our own business, running our own home, so yes. to speak. Yes. And we believe that when we look over to the neighbor's house, they are imperfect. Yeah. But we look over our house and we see perfection. Yeah. So the whole glass house is, is listen, we're all imperfect. Yeah. We're all fragile. Yeah. We're all transparent. Ah. So don't throw stones. Because when you fling one mm. from over fear house to Fimi house, mm -hmm. chances are one may come oh, right back and broke for your <laughs> collarbone. That's so true. According to Little Miss, <laughs> Minnie Miss Lou. Are you familiar with Little Miss, Minnie Miss, Minnie Miss Lou? I'm not, no. There's a little girl that called herself um, Courtney Greaves. Oh. Call herself Minnie Miss Lou. She's a... So I board. guess we I guess we need to find her to bring her on this. Yes, this you should show. find her. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. And on set, we are having such an 
awesome time. I have Mary from St. Mary, and we're talking about what led to her writing her book, Glass Houses. Of course, it was her journey of not hearing from God, and God was answering through others. She finally recognized God has been answering all along. When we come back, we're going to see what led to her writing Glass Houses too. Stay tuned. Who am I really? Choices, choices, choices. In pursuit of a career? OMG, I'm a wife. Help, I am a mother. Oh, I'm in church. When do I get to be a woman that God called me to be? Uniquely Me covers the acrobatic endeavors of every woman to balance the responsibilities of being a mother, a wife, a professional, a church leader, a friend, yet still maintain her identity. I too am a mother, a wife, a trained minister of religion, a banker, an entrepreneur trying to balance the many hats that signifies my role. My book will help motivate and empower every woman who is really unique in her own way. Grab your copy today on Amazon because Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Welcome back to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. On set today, we have Mary from St. Mary, and it sounds so good to say that. Uh, just before we took the break, Mary was sharing how she stick God up with a gun to his head yeah. and said, God, today I'm being nice and dandy, and you need to send my husband up the stairs with a rose in his hand. And so I'm sure many of you are wondering, did she, did that man ever come up the <laughs> stairs, you know, after she go and give it to God? So Mary, yeah. did, did the husband ever show up? <laughs> no, we're t the time is ticking like year, like three years since uh -huh. the prayer <laughs> did not happen. So yes. I'm still single. Ow! Oh, I think you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I just I, I want to leave this word with you on that. Be anxious for nothing. Yes. You know, um, the word does say to ask and it shall be given. Mm -hmm. But what I also know is that his plans for us are perfect. Absolutely. And God knows what we need when we need it, just at the time when we need it. So in due season, you never know. Yeah. That knight in shining armor, he might not be tall, dark, and handsome. He might be short <laughs> and fat and stubby. <laughs> might just come up the stairs. <laughs> but Mary, so that takes that that answers what happened with Glass House One. But let's talk a little bit more about you. You know, your siblings, that kind of thing. How many are you, mommy, daddy? Seven brothers and sisters together, mm -hmm. um, with my mom and dad. Yeah. And um I grew up, as I said, seeing them living a Christian life. We yeah. grew up in with very in very trying circumstances, mm -hmm. we didn't have boasty or fancy stuff. But what I learned, my mother was my, it was and still is, mm -hmm. my role model. Mm -hmm. In all the hardships that we suffered growing up. Yeah. And you know, as children, you're going to be long, yeah, you're going to be bad mind for other children's stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially when they might get barrel from foreign and you don't have no friends or family or foreign sending anything. Mm -hmm. And you see them come looking all snazzy in them new sneakers and things. You're going to get bad mind. Yeah. So my mom would always have um, these little sayings, proverbs. She used to use a lot of proverbs yes. to tell you, to say, you know, Mary... Time is longer than rope. Yeah. Today for you, tomorrow for me. Mm -hmm. Um, don't worry about what you see people have because you have just an equal chance yes. of getting something even better. better. But right. you have to um, work by the sweat of your bro, you shall eat bread. Uh, she used to tell me all of these other things and encourage me. Right. And those encouragement I believe was what really over the years when as growing up and life got really hard. Yeah. Those encouragement, I could always hear my mother giving me her voice, giving me that word of encouragement okay. to say, try harder, try again. Mm -hmm. Failure is just, is not, is not, doesn't mean you're done and out. Mm -hmm. Success is just around the corner. But if you yeah. give up in the game, you'll never reap, yes. turn that failure. You'll never transform it yes. into a success. Yeah. So I used to, I, she used to say things like that because she used to read a lot. Mm. So even though she never went to school and had formal education, education right. 
she was very wise. She was a very wise woman because she read her Bible, of course. Mm -hmm. But she used to read, as I say on the cover there, she used to read a lot of mm -hmm. romance, Mills and Boons and Harlequin romance novels. And from these novels, she basically, my mother had an imaginary life that was <laughs> out of this world, <laughs> yes. living in her like a two, two room board house. You could not believe. Sometimes I found it hard to reconcile that woman yes. with the circumstance that we were living in. Wow. So, so you talk about, I noticed you refer to her as was, you know, which I get the feeling she's not here anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, just some more little talk, there is some trauma surrounding that. Yes. Um, talk with us a little bit about what happened. After much in the closet, yeah. uh, hiding my trauma, because it's very hard. Yeah. It's very, very hard for me to talk about it because as I say, my mom was my friend right. and my role model. Mm -hmm. But in Glass House is two, yeah. which is this one mm -hmm. coming out. Wow. Um, I'm holding it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that God was leading me mm -hmm. to the place where he wants me to. He wants me to share that pain because right. I don't know who is out there waiting mm -hmm. for this story to see this to to be able to relate to it to be able to get past the trauma that they have gone through right but i was inspired to talk about that story in glass houses too yeah my mother um september 6 um 2010 mm -hmm. um was brutally murdered by my nephew oh. she and her best friend and uh, oh. it's like i am living the day before that day so i'm still living yeah. in september 5. yeah i couldn't go over to september 6. it's too i understand i understand um but i got to the point again where i was angry mm -hmm. because i'm like god how do you allow something like this to happen to someone who has spent all their lives yeah. serving you? Yeah. You let this happen. How do you do it? Mm -hmm. And you know what came to me? The journey of the apostles. Yeah. It came to me that the apostles who were God's chosen people, mm -hmm. they were there with Jesus all the way. Right. Look at what happened to them. Yes. They were murdered, yes. they were stoned, they, they were, were hanged, beheaded. they were beheaded, they were abused. Yes. And coming out of that, I, I realized that, all right, I get it now, mm -hmm. finally, I get it. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling of entitlement that causes us to believe that as Christians, we're not going to undergo trauma. Yes. We're not going to undergo pain. Uh, and it's that entitlement mentality that makes us at discord with yeah. God. It yeah. took me a long time. Yeah. Uh, but I tell you something, like we said on set of, of, of Saint Mary, is that we often think indeed that we're entitled. And you yes. said it's so, so, so proverbal, if that's the word, yes. because that's indeed your, your next book, um, Glass House 2, yes. the proverbial um, edition. We, we oftentimes think that I'm a Christian, I'm good. And yes. therefore, because I'm good, mm -hmm. um, therefore God needs to, to act on my behalf. He needs to yes. do this, he needs to do that. And like I was sharing that, you know, there's a past of ours that I, I've, I've, for years now, it happened when I was a child, and there's still every day that I question God, why would you allow her to die so violently? So she's coming back from church, yes. as you were saying. Yes. And met into an accident. Met, met in an accident. And died. Yes. And it's something that, you know, I keep asking God. And, and sometimes I'll, I'll be honest that I dare say, well, 
I'm, I'm serving the Lord. I, mm -hmm. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And therefore, nothing bad. Good yeah, Especially happen. when you read, goodness and mercy shall follow, follow me. me. Yes. yes. And I, I tell, to be honest, um, from a wife's standpoint, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Every time trauma starts in, in the home, I'm like, God, I'm a Christian. Yes. God, my husband is a Christian. We ought, not to be go ah, we ought not to be going through trauma. And Or you hear of a Christian's house being broken into, you know, that kind of thing. That yes. sense of entitlement, as you said, yes. that we think that we are, we are not supposed to. Yes. But, you know, I think this is where the word comes in. Should, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yes. You know, that kind of thing. But just wrap up that part of it. Um. How do you, because you, as you stated, you know, it was this, this crime that was committed was banned by your nephew. Mm -hmm. How have you dealt with it over the years? Obviously, we obviously see that you haven't really dealt with it, but in relating to the family, how have you been able to, to, to deal with it? All right. <laughs> I have, from my peace of mind, because I've realized that incident just mm -hmm. taught me how fragile I was yeah. and how mad people really become mad people. Yeah. Today you're saying in your right mind and one thing mm -hmm. is all you need yeah. to push you from sane to insane. That's true. Yes. So I realized that I needed to pour down yeah. and retreat to mm -hmm. a place where I could protect my mental psyche yeah because it was crazy you know everybody wants to know what's happening everybody wants to talk about it yeah. and nobody was realizing okay. that people are actually they're actual victims yes. of a crime yes. and that everybody may not be of that strength yes to say okay this happened let's move on no it's another day yeah no yeah. Yeah. i was one of those persons who couldn't deal with it mm -hmm. because the relationship between my mother and myself right we were in even though they were other siblings and even though i had a father right. in in my world my mom was all i had right 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 but you know mary as i listen to you and i i don't know if this is what uh, i i sense this is from the lord out of your trauma mm -hmm. came your purpose absolutely and so believe i'm just thinking to myself because you and i really didn't talk before but <laughs> i just sense that that prior to that i bet if that didn't happen glass house one and two would not have come out there would be no book mm -hmm. i've had dreams to be a writer all my life or a tv show host or something like that i knew <laughs> i needed to, I'm, I'm one of those persons who love the limelight right. love the publicity so i knew i had to be something like that but never made any any movements. Yes. So, but what brought the book to four is that after talking to all of these people for glasses is one mm -hmm. looking for company in my misery, mm -hmm. and all of these people were telling me their stories that actually helped me to move from anger, yes, to praise, yeah, to acknowledging the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. Then one day I was talking to my sister and I was sharing her some of the stories, the people's stories with her, mm -hmm. um, and she's like. And I'm like, what am I going to do with it? Because I've had so many colleagues, so many stories though. And she said, Mary, that's a divine assignment. Come on, I like that. I like that. Tell me not know what that means. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you have to write a book. Right. You have to put them in a book and write them to share them with other people. And she was very excited going down the road. You know, that's the beta for you. Uh -huh. And I was like, hmm. so we feel right about this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, awesome. <laughs> Mary, you know, your story of inspiration is just phenomenal. And I want you to look in the, in the camera and I want you to speak to that woman who has given up. Mm -hmm. Life has hit her hard. Just like you, she has suffered the loss of a loved one and has literally given up. Despite the fact God has placed something right in front of her and said, get up. I need you to move. I want you to speak to that woman, look in the camera and speak to that woman and say, listen, I don't know what you want to tell her, what the Lord is laying on your heart. I want you to speak to her for a moment. If you are another Mary, you're another me, uniquely me, of course, uniquely you. Trauma is something that I don't believe will ever live a lifetime unless it's very short and never experience. One of the things I've realized from living with the trauma of my mother being murdered by someone who she literally saved his life many times as he was a sickly child is that first 
we have to drop the audacity the audacity to believe that we are entitled especially if we're women and people of god from from pain and suffering suffering is something that if you're following christ and you're true in your belief you will realize that those who follow him suffer much so if you're in for much suffering christ is the way to go but do remember after all this suffering is said and done there's a prize so dear so priceless that's waiting for us and so it's with it will be worth it after all what we suffer in this life and secondly if you believe that you need to be politically correct when you're going through your suffering drop the act when you're going through your suffering feel your pain and do whatever it is necessary to protect yourself because nobody will understand your pain except you even though people will say they do so do what you know is necessary to protect you because at the end of the day the only person that you need to be answering to is you and god and god already knows your pain and he's the only one who can truly say i understand my child Wow. Thank you so much for sharing, Mary. It was such a pleasure having you on set today. Like I'm telling you, you just light up the room, girl. <laughs> That's a Mary that everybody knows. <laughs> but just thank you so much for coming yes. and sharing your story with so many others. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. No doubt it was a fabulous time here with Mary from St. Mary. Of course, if you have a story that you want to have aired, um, you can reach me on 1-876-856-5769. Or, of course, my social channels, they're going across the, 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 the screen. Reach out to me. I look forward to hearing from you. Remember, Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Thank you. Thank you.